Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the national symbols of India. You might be very well aware the fact that India is witnessing some of the controversies related to the national symbols, especially the national emblem of India, that is the lion capital of India which has been recently installed at the top of the parliament building okay so because of this small act of the government there is a huge hue and cry uh, related to this uh, action of the government okay so now it, it will become very important for us to discuss about the national symbols their importance okay see what were their uh, historical backgrounds okay and what is the importance of these national symbols okay so we are going to discuss about such symbols so in 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 this video and as well as in the upcoming video so in this video we will restrict ourselves to the national emblem of india and the national flag of india okay so there are various symbols you know uh, very well that there are more than 15 national symbols which are collectively uh, you know symbolize the india its culture and its heritage okay these symbol uh, these symbols are like the national tree national bird national flag national animal heritage animal rather okay national aquatic animal national river so if you look into these national symbols the river or the plant or the animal they are all associated with the culture of india okay they are very well embedded in the everyday life of the indian people okay so it is very important to know all such details about these uh, animals and their plants which are re regarded as the national symbols okay now what is the importance why we have to give the importance to the national symbols now if you look into the article 51a of the constitution okay there is a provision in the constitution in the fundamental duties that is the article 51a of the constitution talks about the fundamental duties there are 11 fundamental duties okay the first and the foremost fundamental duty of the citizens of india is that it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to abide by the constitution okay and respect its ideals and the institutions the national flag and the national anthem okay this is the fundamental duty of every citizen of india we enjoy the fundamental rights as guaranteed under the chapter 3 of the constitution we have various fundamental rights they are fundamental for our free living okay but at the same time we also have the sum of the responsibility towards the country when we are enjoying the liberty when we are enjoying the freedom there must be the similar responsibility for the citizens also right so we have some of the duties towards the country so one of such first duty is to abide by the constitution and value the institutions under the constitution okay not only the constitution but also the flag the national anthem okay so this is the first duty enshrined in the 51a sub clause sorry clause if article 51a clause a okay so this is the provision under the article 51a clause a then Sardar Vallabhai Patel also said the prominent freedom fighter he says that every citizen of India must remember that he is an Indian and every right in this country but with certain duties he says that every citizen of India must remember that he is an Indian and he has every right in this country but with certain duties that means he is emphasizing on balancing between the duties and the rights yes you have the right as a citizen of india okay you have given rights that means the constitution has given the guarantee that you have some of the rights when you have the right but it should be balanced with the duties also as a citizen you have the duties towards the country this is what he said by the sardar wallabhai patel okay because of this because of the opinion of the sardar patel because of the constitution it becomes very important for us to observe or respect the national symbols okay when one says we are of this nation then it becomes important to respect the nationhood okay so by respecting the national symbols we are respecting the nationhood because i said these national symbols are the collective symbols of the culture and the heritage okay this culture is the the millions of years of 
culture has been embedded in these symbols okay all the culture has been symbolized in one image okay let us say the flag or the national emblem so when we re respect this uh, emblem we are respecting our nationhood okay we are respecting our long journey as a civilization okay this is the importance then these symbols are intrinsic to the indian identity and heritage yes identity and heritage see if you look into the tree that is ficus religiosa if you look into the national river that is the ganges if you look into the national emblem that is the uh, lion capital of the ashokan empire uh, em emperor ashoka okay so these are all embedded in the heritage of the india and they symbolize the identity of india so they infuse the sense of pride and patriotism yes this is very important they infuse in every citizen's heart the enthusiasm as well as the pride and the patriotism so if you look into the national flag when we observe the national days like the uh, independence day uh, or the january 26th the republic day when we observe such days national days when we hoist the national flag the patriotism itself flows out of our hearts okay so the flag is infusing within us the patriotism so we are by saluting the national flag we are saluting the whole nation we are saluting the whole journey of india as a country and as a civilization okay so this is the importance of all these national symbols now before going further into this discussion i would like to ask one question as usual okay so the national pledge of india okay national pledge of india so the there is a national pledge also whether you are aware or not there is a national pledge okay so that means the promise pledge means the promise so there is a national pledge of india which was adopted by the government of india in 1965 this pledge is written by who has written the national pledge pledge of india so there are four options whether it's a uh, sardar vallabhai patel or dr ambedkar or dr sri radha krishnan or P. V. Subbaram, who has written the National Pledge of India, and you have to answer. Okay, by the end of this discussion, we will come to the answer. So, why we have taken up this discussion? As I have said already, that this topic has become relevant because of the recent controversy related to the installment of the this statue on the Parliament building. Okay. So there is a controversy regarding the aggressiveness of this uh, line. This is the lion uh, capital. So four sided. This capital is you know uh, has the lions. Lions are facing the four you know directions. Okay. The, some of them are telling that these lions are aggressive compared to the Ashokan lion capital. Okay. So this is the controversy. So because of this controversy, this topic has been selected. Okay. Now we. Uh, let us uh, discuss one symbol by another okay first let us discuss about the national flag okay so national flag what is the dimension of this flag this is 2 is to 3 that means the width must be uh, 2 and the length must be 3 that means if the the width of the flag is 20 centimeter it, it's you know length must be 30 centimeter or if it is 2 meter uh, width 3 meter must be the length okay so this is the 2 is through 2 is to 3 ratio dimension okay this is the breadth and this is the width of the flag 2 is to 3 then the design of the national flag was adopted by the constituent assembly on J july 20 sorry july 22 1947 this was the day before india got the independence okay the national flag was already adopted okay that was on july 22nd 1947 this flag is based on the swaraj flag this is very important so before india adopted its uh, flag which is which is what we are seeing today before this flag there was a one more flag called as the swaraj flag okay this present flag is based on the swaraj flag this swaraj flag was designed by pingali venkat Venkaya. P. Venkaya or Pingali Venkaya, he designed the uh, previous flag. Based on that flag, we have designed the new modern day national flag. Okay. The wheel at the center of this flag, it is also a symbol. It symbolizes various things. So, 
this wheel, from where this wheel is coming from in this national flag. So it comes from the abacus of the Sarnath capital, Sarnath lion capital of the Ashoka the Great. Okay. So there is a lion capital, okay, uh, which is okay, uh, which is put in the Sarnath museum. Okay. From this museum, we have adopted the this wheel. Okay. This wheel is also called as the Dharma Chakra or the eternal wheel of law. Okay. This wheel, it's the law of wheel. It it runs continuously that means eternally it runs okay okay it is called as the eternal wheel of law or the dharma chakra so the diameter of this wheel okay it varies based on the width of the the white color band in the flag okay the diameter approximates to the width of the white color band in the flag okay it has 24 spokes you know it these are the very basic information related to the national flag okay this wheel has the 24 spokes so, before uh, adoption of this flag on the July 22nd, 1947, I said there are various versions of this national flag. Okay, so one was uh, one flag was called as the Vande Matram flag, which was designed by some other freedom fighter. Okay, there was one more flag designed by the uh, Pingali Venkataram uh, Venkataya. Okay, so Gandhi also had uh, some vision about the national flag. Okay, this is the Swaraj flag various flags were there before the adoption of the actual flag of flag of today so this is the gandhi's flag initially gandhi uh, he designed the flag with the only two colors that is the red and the green with the chakra in between okay the gandhi's flag introduced at the congress meeting in the 1921 okay this is the gandhi's flag so after that the swaraj flag officially adopted by the indian national congress that is inc in the year 1931 okay so this is 21 this is 31 gandhi's flag and the swaraj flag but the gandhi commissioned pingali venkaiya okay this is very important Pingal, pingali venkaiya was commissioned by the gandhi ji to design a flag with the spinning wheel on red and green banner so gandhi had only two colors in his mind only the red color and the uh, green color okay with the chakra in between these two colors he asked the Pingali Venkaya to design the national flag and he designed based on the design given by the Pingali Venkaya the Swaraj flag was framed and at the end in the 1947 when we adopted the new flag it was again based on this Swaraj flag this is the Swaraj flag this is based on the Pingali Venkaya's design okay and based on this flag the modern day flag is there so let us go a little deeper into this. He is the Sri Pingali Venkaya. He designed the national flag. So Gandhian, he is the Gandhian. That means that he is the follower of the Gandhiji. He designed the initial version of the flag. Okay. After his initial design, the Hyderabadi woman, Suraya Tyabji, he finalized the flag. Okay. Whatever the Gandhiji asked the Pingali Venkaya to design, that design was finally finalized by this Suraya Tyabji. Okay. The Pingali Venkaya proposed the concept of national flag in the 1916 itself. The, he was the f uh, initial or the one of the initial persons to propose the national uh, flag in the 1916 itself. Okay, he was the he was working as a lecturer in the Vijayawada at that time in the 1960s when he proposed the national flag. He was a teacher or the lecturer. The draft design was submitted in the 1921. Yes, in the previous slide I said I showed that this is the finalized version of the the flag designed by the Pingali Venkaya. Okay. The design first served as the Congress flag. Initially, when the the flag was designed by Pingali Venkaya, this was the first flag designed by him. Okay, it was adopted as the Congress flag. It was uh, adopted by the Constituent Assembly on July 22nd, 1947, and was adopted as the national flag before the independence. Yes, the national flag, whatever we are seeing today, it is adopted much before the actual day of independence okay so this is the historical background to the national flag of india but there are different colors in our flag okay so saffron color white color and the green color though these different colors you know symbolize the different things the saffron color it symbolizes the courage and the sacrifice of the people of india and the white color it symbolizes the purity truth and the peace okay the green color it symbolizes the faith fertility prosperity as well as the progress of the country 
okay but at the center of this so there is a dharma chakra or the eternal law of wheel with the 24 spokes okay it also symbolizes the continuous law okay the justice now the manufacturing process and the specifications yes the design this flag cannot be manufactured by everyone okay it cannot be manufactured according to one's uh, whims and the fancies okay there are some specifications there are some processes these specifications and the uh, processes or the procedures are laid down by the bureau of indian standards or the bis it lays down the the processes manufacturing processes and the specifications the right to manufacture the flag as of now there is one commission that commission holds the the right to manufacture the flag that is the khadi development and village industries commission okay kdi kdvic khadi development and village industries commission this is the only uh, the authority which has the right to manufacture the flag okay the karnataka khadi gram uh, yoga samyukta sangha has been the sole manufacturer of the flag. Yes, this commission has asked this Sangha, that is the Karnataka Khadi Gamad Yoga Samyukta Sangha to manufacture the flag. Okay. As of now, this is the only organization which is manufacturing the flag. The hand woven khadi for the national flag was initially manufactured at the Garag. There is a village called the Garag in the Karnataka. It is located in the Dharwad district. Okay, this is the very small village. In this village, in 1954, some of the freedom fighters together, they started to uh, spin the khadi for the national flag. Okay, from that, that initial step led to the manufacturing of the national flags in this village. Okay, the hand woven, woven khadi for the national flag was initially manufactured at the Garag, a small village in the Darwa district of Karnataka. A center was established at Garag in 19. 54, not Gadag, it is Garag, okay, G-A-R-A-G, -A -A so by a few freedom fighters. Now, this is the only location uh, along with this Hubli in the same uh, state called Karnataka. These are the two areas where the national flag is being manufactured under the authority of the Karnataka, uh, sorry, uh, Khadi Development and Village Industries Commission, okay. Now, there is one more concept related to the flag that is the half mast that means the flag has to be hoisted at the middle of the uh, flag post okay so this is the flag post okay so when the national flag is hoisted at the middle of this pole it is called as the half mast half mast flag okay when the flag has to be hoisted half mast there are some situations and there are some authorities who will order to hoist the flag at the half mast okay the flag should be flown at half mast as a sign of mourning so when why we have to hoist the flag uh, half mast as a sign of mourning or when the dignitary or the very significant person in the society dies or who has contributed too much to the country or who has you know worked for the development of the country or if we who has worked hard to normalize the relations between different countries okay as a mark of respect to that person as a mark of mourning we will hoist the flag half mast okay so as a ma sign of mourning the decision to do so lies with the president of india who will order to hoist the flag half mast that order is given by the president of india not the prime minister not the speaker and any other personalities only the president of india can order the people to hoist the flag half mast okay and he will also specifies the period of such morning how long this flag can be hoisted half mast okay that is also uh, will be decided by the president of india based on his orders we will hoist the flag half mast when the flag is to be flown at the half mast, it must be first raised to the top of the mast and then slowly lowered. Okay, we are not hoisting the flag at the half. Okay, first we will hoist the flag to the fullest extent in this pole. Then we will slowly lower the flag to the middle of this pole. Okay, there is a, some procedure for hoisting the flag half mast also. Only the Indian flag is flown half mast. All the other flags remain normal height. Okay. When the Indian flag or the Indian national flag is lowered at the middle of the pole, 
and rest of the other flags. The, some, of, some of the states have their own flag, like, like the Karnataka, it has its own flag, okay? So such flags cannot be hoisted half, okay? They, they can remain in their uh, actual position, but only the national flag has to be lowered down, okay? So this is the half mast concept of the national flag. Then there is one code related to the national flag. So this code, okay, it was framed in the year 2002. It talks about how to fight the national flag, when not to fight the national flag, what are the you know uh, criminals or the uh, the mistakes associated with the hoisting the national flag. There are various procedures established under this code. It, it is, they are all related to the national flag and how to honor the national flag, how to respect it, and how to safely dispose of the uh, national flag and all. All of them are written in this code. That is the flag code of India. That is 2002. The use, display, and hoisting of the national flag flag in the country is guided by the Flag Code of India 2002. Okay, there are some guidelines in this code. Okay, those guidelines are related to the use, display, and hoisting the national flag. The Flag Code of India took effect on Janu January 26, 2002. Right. So on the January 26 Republic Day, this. Uh, code was initiated okay this code supersedes the flag code of india that existed earlier okay it you know uh, superseded or uh, it abolished all the initial codes related to the flag and it became the sole code for the national flag of india now the flag code of india 2002 has been divided into three parts there are three parts in this uh, code the first part Okay, it, it, it is related to the general description of the national flag. So it describes the national flag. What is the national flag? What is its uh, uh, dimension? What are the colors and what are those uh, colors sim, uh, sim, uh, symbols? Okay, so this is what has been discussed in the part one. The part two talks about the display of the national flag by the members of the public. That means the public, the general public, the private organizations, educational institutions, and various other such institutions. The part second. The part three talks about the display of the national flag by the union and the state governments. Yes, the part second is related to the general public and various other institutions. But the part three talks about the display of the national flag by the central government, by the state governments, and various other agencies or the organizations under the government of India or under the state governments. Okay, so these are the three parts under the National Flag Code of India 2002. Now, very recently, in last year, that means around just six to seven months back, there was an amendment to this Flag Code of India. Okay, so. Why the amendments were introduced into the flag code of India 2002? Okay, the flag code of India, okay, 2002. There is an amendment now. And those amendments were introduced in the year 2021, December. Okay, why the amendments have to be made? So, in 2022, we are observing the 75th year of independence. That means. Azadika Amrut Mahotsav. The central government is observing the Azadika Amrut Mahotsav, that is 75th year of independence. Here, the government has designed one scheme called Har Ghar Tiranga. That means the flag for every household, the flag for every family. So, here, what it is planning is that, so it has aimed for providing the flags for every household. It has planned to provide the house uh, flag for 20 crore families in the country okay to reach the 20 crore families it has initiated a scheme called as the Hargar Tiranga the, as the name itself suggests the flag for every uh, family or every house okay to mark the 75th independence day so this is the occasion now in the previous slide we discussed that there is only one organization under the uh, Khadi commission okay so that commission has given the permission to manufacture the flags okay in the karnataka there is one small village called the garag and it is supplying the national flag for all the uh, places in the country from delhi to 
uh, Kanyakumari, from Gandhinagar to the Arunachal Pradesh, from all, all the places in the country are getting the national flag from this place in Karnataka. Now, so it will be very difficult within a short period of time to supply the crores of you know, flags uh, for every household. It is difficult to manufacture the flag. So that is why the government, government of India has made some changes to the flag code of India. Okay. Now under this, what the government has decided is that, so the national flag made of polyester or machine made flag have also been allowed. Now initially the flag made of only khadi was allowed to manufacture. Okay. Now under this uh, amendment to the flag code of India, the government has allowed uh, uh, manufacturing of the flag made of polyester or machine made flags. Okay, this is the new change in the flag code of India. Now the national flag shall be made of hand spun, hand woven or machine made. Okay, initially only the hand made khadi flag was allowed to be hoisted. Now under the, under the new amendment, whether it is a hand spun or hand woven or machine made, whether the material is cotton or polyester or wool or silk or khadi, any of the material can be used as per the amended flag code. Okay, so this is the new change in the flag code of India. But this initiation or this initiative by the government has attracted various criticism from different corners of the country and from different sections of the people. Okay, there are some criticisms related to this action of the government. What is the criticism? The move will break the association between the tricolor, the independence movement and the khadi. The tricolor is nothing but the national flag of India, right? So the criticizers or the critics, they are telling that the initial, uh, this initiative of the government will break the link between the flag, the national movement and the khadi. See, national movement, it is associated especially with the arrival of the Gandhi from the Africa the national uh, movement is associated with the khadi spinning. The Gandhiji introduced the khadi as a self-reliance, okay, as a symbol of self-respect against the British, okay. So khadi spinning was a part of national movement and the charka was became the, uh, the very popular symbol of nationalism during the Gandhian period of struggle, okay. So the criti critics are, uh, they are telling that this, you know, allowance of the polyester as a national flag will break the link between this independence movement, the khadi and the tricolor. Okay, this is the one criticism. The replacement of the material would need to be imported and would end up benefiting the countries like India. So to manufacture the cross of flags within a short period of time, there might be shortage of the material like the polyester or the cotton or any other material which is you know uh, provided in the amended flag code of India. Okay. The shortage of material will lead to the import of such material from the countries, especially the countries like the China. Okay, the China it is against the India in some of the sovereign aspect like the Jammu and Kashmir issue, especially in the POK. The China considers the Pak occupied Kashmir as the part of Pakistan, but it is the sovereign part of India. The somewhere the China is you know questioning the sovereignty of India, but. This national flag, it is the symbol of unity and the pride of India, but to prepare or to symbolize or to prepare the symbol of the pride of India, we have to take the material from the countries like the China. It is also one of the criticisms. Then there will be the loss of livelihood to the Khadi weavers. Yes, there are hundreds of thousands of Khadi weavers dependent on the uh, weaving of the national flag for their livelihood. Okay, all of a sudden if the polyester is allowed to be used as a material for the national flag, the livelihood of the such khadi weavers will be affected. Okay, these are the criticisms or the negative follows of the initi uh, initiative taken by the government of India. The Karnataka Khadi Gramadyog Samyukta Sangha, this is the only union or the only Sangha which is now manufacturing the, the national flag in the Karnataka. Okay, now it has stopped the weaving of the national flag because of the initiative taken by the government of India. So, okay, these are the some of the negative aspects related to this newly introduced amendment to the national flag code of India. Now, so far we have discussed one issue related to the flag of India or national flag of India. Now, there is one more initiative or the issue related to the national emblem. Okay. 
So this is our national emblem. Okay, this is the Sarnath Lion Capital. Okay, the this was you know commissioned by the Ashoka the Great. Okay, the Mauryan Emperor. So this is what is the newly installed Lion Capital at the top of the new Parliament building. Okay, so because of this difference in the appearance of the Lion Capitals, there is a criticism. Okay, so this is a very uh, what you call a sober the lion capital this is somewhat looks like the aggressive capital okay lion capital so because of this difference in the aggressiveness or the soberness of these lions there is a criticism okay so let us not go uh, into the criticism let us only discuss about the importance or the historical background of this national emblem the national emblem of india it is an adoption from the Sarnath Lion capital of the Ashoka the Great. Yes, it is the adoption from the Sarnath Lion capital. It became the emblem of the dominion of India. See, you must be very well aware that there are two concepts called dominion of India and the Republic of India. So immediately after India got the independence, it was not a sovereign country. It was recognized as the domain, dominion of India. Okay. This emblem was the part of, or the, it was an emblem of dominion of India till 1947. But later it became the emblem of Republic of India. Once the India adopted the constitution, once the constitution was enforced, now this emblem became the emblem or the national emblem of the Republic of India. Okay. See, so it has along with this lion there are in this abacus this is called as the abacus okay so this is the lion capital below this lion capital there will be the abacus below the abacus there is a okay one a single stoned pillar there will be one pillar okay this is the ashokan pillar so this is the Ashokan pillar. Be upon this pillar, there will be one abacus. Okay, based on this abacus, upon this abacus, there will be the animal capital. This animal capital is nothing but the lion capital here. Okay. So below this lion, there is a one part. In this part, there are again four more animals. One is the horse or the galloping horse. In front, uh, uh, next uh, next to horse, there will be the again one elephant. After the elephant, there will be bull. Okay elephant galloping horse bull and the lion these are the four animals which are you now uh, found below this main lion capital okay along with these animals there is one phrase called the satya meva jayate okay this satya meva jayate is written in the devanagari script okay this this is the motto of the india that means it is the purpose or it is the what you call as the main goal of the uh, government of India, that is the Satya Meva Jayate. That means it, the country wants to tell that the truth alone triumphs, or truth alone wins in the end. Okay, so this phrase is taken from the Manduka Upanishad. Okay, the Upanishads. Okay, these are this is the last portion or last part to the Vedic uh, scripture. Okay, so in the last leg of the Vedic, Vedic scripture, that is the Manduka Upanishad. From this Manduka Upanishads we have taken the phrase called as the Satya Meva Jayate. This Satya Meva Jayate phrase or the motto is the integral part of this lion capital. Okay. So this lion capital along with this phrase, they, it constitutes the national emblem of India. But there is one law related to the this national emblem of India, the state emblem of India, prohibition of improper use act 2005. Okay, so recent controversy it will allow us to look into the legal provisions when there is a so much of hue and cry across the country related to one small uh, change in the national emblem. Okay, on what basis these people are criticizing the government? That criticism comes from this act that is the state emblem of India prohibition of improper use act 2005 the usage of the emblem is regulated and restricted under the this act okay how you uh, use the emblem when to use who can use this emblem all of these you know 
uh, guidelines are given under this act okay uh, this act was enacted in the year 2005 along with this act there are some rules also okay these are these can be called as the uh, protocol uh, <coughs> what you call supplementary to the act that is the state emblem of india regulation of use rules 2007 Do, uh, 2007 rules along with the 2005 act they constitute the the manner in, in which the emblem can be used okay or it can be modified according to the 2005 act the state emblem of india is is as described and specified in the schedule to be used as an official seal of the government okay there is a schedule there are two schedules under this 2005 act schedule one and schedule two okay how however or whatever the procedure laid down, laid down in these schedules, according to that procedure only the emblem can be described or it can be manufactured. The schedule of the Act states that okay, the emblem of India is an adoption from the adaptation from the Sarna Bayani capital of Ashoka, which is preserved and shall conform to the designs as set out in the appendix one or the appendix two. So there are two append appendices to the 2005 Act. Okay, in these appendices, there are some uh, what you call rules or the regulations. According to these rules and regulations only, the lion capital can be adopted. The question is when there is a statute that specifically states that the state emblem should conform to the designs set out in the Act. Does the center have any powers to make changes to the emblem? This is the question. Okay, the law says that there are appendices under the 2005 Act. According to the provisions given in these two appendices, the government can make the changes. But the government has made the changes uh, without looking into the provisions of these appendices. Now the question will automatically arise whether the government has such authority or such power to make modifications to that emblem. Whether it, it Okay, let us look into this answer for this question. Section 6, class 2, subclass F of the same act, that is 2005 act, it further provides that the center with the, it, it provides the center with the power to do all such things included in the, including the specifications of the design of the emblem. Okay, the provision specifically states, this provision, that is, the section 6 class 2 subclass F of the 2005 Act, it says that the center has the power to change the specifications uh, now written in the Act. Subject to the subject to the provisions of this Act, the central government shall have the power powers to do all such things including the specification of the design of the emblem and its use in the manner whatsoever as the central government considers necessary or expedient for the exercise of the foregoing powers that means the the same act also says that the central government has the power to make the changes to the design or specifications to the national emblem okay therefore according to this provision the government has the power to make changes in the design of the emblem yes the act itself says that the central government has the power to change the national emblem itself or it can change the national and uh, emblems design itself but one needs to note that it only refers to change in the design and not change in the not a change of the state emblem itself see this is the argument this is the provision under the law okay but this is the opinion of these some of the experts they are telling that yes the act provides for the or provides the power to the central government to, to change the national emblem or to change that design but it is not asking the central government or it is not empowering the central government to, to, to change the existing or to change the or to manufacture the national emblem which is not in accordance with the uh, the procedure laid out in the uh, appendix one and two of the act okay so this is what is the opinion of the some of the experts then there is no emblem set out in the constitution of india yes there is no emblem which the constitution is not talking about the emblem or national insignia or anything else only under the uh, the fundamental duties uh, under the article 51 a sub clause a it tells that it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to abide by the constitution 
to respect its institutions, ideals, and national flag and the national anthem. So this is what is said in the Constitution of India, but it is not talking about the emblem. The emblem design is set out in the Appendix 1 and 2 of the 2005 Act. Okay, amending the Act, the government can have new emblem if it desires so. Yes, by amending the 2005 Act itself, it can change the national emblem of India. Now we have the four lion faced national emblem which is adopted from the Sarnath lion capital. Okay, so this is what is the emblem. But this emblem can be changed by the central government itself. But the central government cannot change according to its whims and the fancies. There are some procedures, there are some well, very well established protocols for that. So therefore, in any such matter, the government should proceed with extreme care and caution. So according to its whims and fancies, by every now and then it cannot change the emblems. It has to treat the path with very cautious efforts. Okay? Why it has to treat the path with caution? Okay, while the law permits the central government to amend or alter or modify the national emblem, it should always be remembered that these are the solemn symbols of the Republic. This is very, very important phrase. These are the solemn symbols of the Republic and have great historical significance. Yes, we have adopted this national uh, emblem, this Sarnath Lion Capital, which it was carved in the third century BC, okay, third century BCE. That means Ashoka's period, when was the Ashoka there? He was the king from 273 to 232 BCE, okay. So during his tenure, during his reign, this lion captain was uh, carved out. So we have adopted such a image as a national emblem that means it has lot of historical significance, more than 2000 year old history it has and we have recognized it and we have valued it. But that it, it says that this symbol or this emblem has lot of historical significance and it has architectural significance and it has cultural and heritage significance also. But when so many people uh, like the constituent assembly, forefathers of the constitution or the star wars of the freedom struggle, they have chosen such an emblem, but this emblem cannot be changed because it has so much significance it has, right? Because of this significance, the central government cannot change the symbols according to its whims and the fancies, okay? So this has to be kept in mind in the government of India before it changes or it alters any of the symbols associated with the national pride or the national heritage of India. Okay, so this is what is about the national emblem of India. Now let us come to our question. Initially I asked one question that is the national pledge of India was adopted by the government of India in the year 1965 and this pledge is written by whom? Okay. This national pledge is written by P. V. Subbarao. Okay, P. V. Subbarao has written the National Pledge of India. Originally, it was written in the year uh, 1963. Okay, it was written in the year 1963 in the language Telugu. Shri P. V. Subbarao had written the pledge in the Telugu language. Subsequently, it was translated into English. Okay, and other regional languages. Now this pledge will be taken by the school children and the other college uh, going students and the occasions like the uh, Independence Day or Republic Day or Gandhi Jayanti or any of the such public events or the public gatherings, this pledge will be read out and it will be uh, taken uh, by the students and other people. Okay, So this is the National Pledge of India written by P. V. Subbarao. So this is all about the today's discussion. And thank you very much for watching this video.